Spooky 1000, and today we are in St. Augustine. We are going to spend the night in our tent here. We're at Anastasia State Park, and it's right near the beach. And we're going to go to the lighthouse tonight and do a ghost tour. So um, stay tuned, and hopefully we'll, we'll get our tent up. So I'm going to show you where we are. And Shaber doesn't really like it, but I think it's okay. Yep, they give you electricity and water, and then you get your fireplace down there. And we're not really going to do anything with that because we're not going to be here that much. It's just for sleeping this time around. But if we like this park, we may come back and maybe stay a few extra days when, you know, a holiday, you know, four days or something like that because we are on the beach. And Bruno's with us, of course. He's our lovely mascot. So, anyways, we're going to get the tent up and we're going to go and explore, so stay tuned. Okay, guys, so now we're at the beach, which is not far from where our camping area, and I'm going to show you. We're on the dunes. These are called the dunes here. Hopefully you can see them in this. And there you go. We are at the ocean. And St. Augustine. Pretty cool. And here over here is a pier over there. Don't know why, but there's a pier. It could be private. Looks like they're condos or something over there. And just dunes, sand dunes. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Alright guys, I see anything, I don't see any boats out there at the moment, so very nice, so we'll be back. Yeah, so now we're on the, what they call the walkway, and uh, overlook. Yeah, overlook, there's another one over there, yeah, maybe you get a higher view over there. This is from this angle here. Yeah, looks cloudy. It looks like it's going to rain. It might hold out. I sure hope it does. Oh, wow. Look how long it is. Yeah. The lighthouse. Oh, there's the lighthouse. Oh, so cool. That's it's a pretty, pretty picture. Yeah, isn't that a pretty picture? Wow. Very cool. See, you never know until you start looking. Okay, guys, we're on an overlook. Yeah, that's really pretty. Yep. Awesome sauce. Very, very pretty. All right. We'll be back.
Jackson once again. I don't know if I said that actually, I might have forgotten. Uh, but anyway, we're at the lighthouse. This is like the main event, I assume, for most of you, right? This is why you're all here tonight. Well, if I wanted to tell you every single ghost story about our lighthouse, we'd be here all night. No one would have time to do anything else. So I'm gonna try and narrow it down to the greatest hits. And I get a show of hands. Who here has seen Ghost Hunters? There's always a few of you. Now keep your hands up if you've seen the one where they've come here. For those of you who have, feel free to just shout it out. What is one thing you remember from that episode? Them seeing the things looking over the um, trailing there? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. That is the answer I always get, so thank you for knowing your lines. <laughs> now, uh, for those of you who are not aware of what we're talking about, in about 2005 or 6, somewhere around then, the ghost hunters came to our lighthouse for the very first time. They put a camera inside facing up the stairs, <coughs> and they caught on video the shadowy outline of a man leaning over the railing and looking down at them. Now, they're braver than I am, and they decided to give chase. They climbed up the lighthouse, they chased after it, and that figure, that shadow, they see it running up the stairs ahead of them, about a flight or so ahead, and they get to the very top, and they are the first to set off the motion-sensitive light that we keep on the top landing of the lighthouse, which of course means that there's nothing physical ahead of them, right? Now, uh, of course they know that they saw something, and they want to make sure that there's nothing weird going on around them. So, the only sign of any activity they can find is a swinging padlock on one of, the do uh, one of the doors. Now, whether you know it or not, that is why you're all here this evening, because if we had not had that incident, we probably wouldn't have ghost tours and I would be out of a job. Now, this figure, this shadow figure, as we call it, it is very frequently seen around here. It usually does the same things, so if you want to see it tonight, I recommend, as you are climbing the lighthouse, watch the landings ahead of you, occasionally peek up through the stairwell, watch below you as you're going back down, as you're walking around this evening, watch those windows, watch that top landing. All of these are places where we have frequently seen this figure. Is there a concert? I keep changing their volume. But anyway, sorry, I'm gonna move us yeah, well, indoors next time to, to avoid you. this. Yeah. Now, yeah, you'll have to do a voiceover. So I can tell y'all that I will not be searching for this shadow figure because the day I see a shadow figure, that's when I hand in my two weeks. That's when I'm gonna quit. I don't want nothing to do with that. Now, that being said though, I have had my own personal encounter here at our lighthouse. About month two into working here, I was closing up this building for the very first time. I was walking down the stairs and I know there's no one behind me. I searched, right? I made sure there was no one up there as I'm going down. And about halfway down, I start to hear footsteps behind me. Now this building is super echoey, so I thought, you know what, it's my own echo, it's nothing to worry about. But still I was freaked out because this was pitch black inside, and just being in that kind of environment tends to be kind of scary. So I say to myself, you know what, I'm going to stop, I'm going to take a break, catch my breath before I continue and I'll prove that nothing's going on. So I stop, and when I do, the footsteps keep going, and they only get closer. And that's when I make the educated decision to run down the last two flights of stairs. And uh, this is my request for all of you tonight. Don't do that. It, it's not a good move. The, it's really dark, the stairs are dark too, so it's just, it's a, it's a tripping hazard waiting to happen. One of the rules that I did not mention, this is a personal rule on my tour, there is no falling allowed. Don't do it. Um, if you do find that you are being chased down the lighthouse by a 
shadowy specter calmly and quietly exit the building. <laughs> now with that, I'm going to move us on to our next spot, which will luckily be indoors. So we're going to go this way.
So, he builds a scaffolding, he's all the way at the top, and he gives way beneath his feet. He has no way to save himself, and he falls from the very top, up here. First he lands in the oil house roof beneath the tower. He bounces off of that, and he cracks his neck on the wall that surrounds the building. How do we know all of that? Well, that is exactly the way it was reported in the newspaper's obituary section. <laughs> yeah, which says a couple things to me. Number one, that obituaries used to have a much different vibe. <laughs> now, the other thing it says is that someone had to have been here to see it happen. But at the time, this island was pretty much abandoned. The only ones who would have lived here to see it would have been his wife, Maria, or any of their kids. And now, Maria Andrew is in a very difficult spot. Not only has she, of course, lost her husband, but she's now a sole breadwinner in a family that still includes several very young children. In the year's 1859, which doesn't leave her a lot of options. Now, local legend says the night of her husband's death, she climbs to the top of the lighthouse, and in desperation and in anguish, she calls out into the wind, What shall I do? She hears the voice of her husband reply, tends the light. So, whether or not she did hear that voice, that is exactly what she does. Because Maria was the first female lightkeeper here in our town, and the Coast Guard actually recognizes her now as the first Hispanic woman in charge of a naval station here in America. So we're all very proud of Maria. And she's lightkeeper up until the Civil War starts a few years later. Now, when the war starts, Maria knows that her lighthouse will be in danger. See, lighthouses are not light during the war. They're destroyed because they light up their own ships and enemy ships, so no one wants them around. Now, to make sure it wasn't a target, she took the lens from the very top, and with the help of uh, only the mayor of St. Augustine, they buried it in a secret location. And due to their efforts, both the lens and the tower survived the war. Now, that's some great thinking on her part, but at the end of the day, a lighthouse without a light does not need a light keeper. And so she's basically pushed herself out of the job. We don't know where she goes after this. Uh, we think maybe north to Georgia, but all records of her were lost. So we're just not certain what happens to her. What we do know is that she never returns to her lighthouse. Not while she's alive anymore. Because although the shadow figure uh, that I mentioned earlier is the most famous spirit here, Maria is by far the most frequently seen. Now, we get reports of the same woman wandering the property and the nearby areas, always described the exact same way. Long dark hair and a flowing white dress. We get reports of this person across the street uh, by the side of the original lighthouse pacing back and forth down by the docks. We get reports of her on top of our current lighthouse. In fact, neighbors call in sometimes. They say, all worried, there's someone that a dark moon left on top of the tower. Now, don't worry, we've never done this. We've never lost anyone, I promise. Uh, but every time we get this call, my boss has to come out and check. Every time he does, he climbs to the top of the tower, he looks around, and the only thing he ever reports is the smell of orange blossoms on the wind. So we believe that this figure is Maria. Now, my favorite place we see her, though, is over in the nature trails. People walk into the gift shop in the middle of the day, and they'll be coming back from the woods, and they say, I was walking around in the trails, and I got lost. Now, I wandered for a while, and then one of your reenactors came and helped me out. And she was so nice, and she knew so much about the lighthouse, even the original lighthouse. Stuff that wasn't written down anywhere in the museum. And she had this lovely white dress. And of course, we don't know how to tell them that we have never had reenactors. So, we just smile, and we nod, and say, that's Maria, she's our favorite employee, and we send them on their way. So I recommend you guys check out the woods later. Uh, if you see this figure in a long white dress, come let us know. It's either Maria or a crazy person off the fence. Uh, 
lot of reports back there. Uh, just last night we had people hearing these mysterious voices uh, back on the trail, so I definitely recommend it. Um, and with that, I'm going to move this on to our next spot. We're going to go back up this way. No. No. Yeah, I must be having a concert over there somewhere. No. No. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay. awesome. that we have in this house here, and that is the basement. Uh, now you are free to explore the basement later, um, but when you do, I just want to give you a few tips about the layout. I'm going. You're going. So there's You're two going. rooms down there, one on the far side and one on this side here. Now the room on this closer side, we have named after our uh, light keeper who was here the longest. His name was Peter Rasmussen. Uh, we just call it Pete's room. and. Peter, he was a very well-liked figure in town. See, he would have these events for all the townspeople, stuff like uh, oyster roasts, clam baits, other parties like that. So everyone in town loved him, and he loved just about everyone. But there was one exception. And I have some bad news, because some of you guys are going to fall into this group tonight. He hated tourists. I am now, tourist. when he started working here, Henry Flagler had just built the first hotels in town, uh, the buildings that are now the Leitner Museum and Flagler College. When he did this, it introduced tourism not only to St. Augustine, but pretty much to Florida itself. And even back then, business was booming. So, whenever any of these people would come into town, they'd look across the water, they would see our lighthouse, Uh, they would want to come and pay a visit. Now, anytime they did, poor Peter had to drop whatever he was doing and give a tour. He had to give a tour not only of the lighthouse, but of his own home. So, I want you all to put yourself in his place for a minute. Imagine that once a day, at least, every single day, 
someone knocks on the front door of your house, demands a tour, and you have no choice but to say yes. Now imagine this happens for over 20 years. You start to see where he's coming from, I think, right? See, he kept a very thorough track of how many people came to visit. At the end of his very first year, he had reported more than 3,500 people. At the peak of his time here as Lightkeeper, he reported in one year alone over 8,000 people. Which, if you break that down day by day, it's a lot. Now, luckily for Peter, he was not completely alone. He had his lovely wife, Lula, and Lula was something of a southern belle from Georgia who loved entertaining. Now, whenever he could, Peter would take his guests out of the lighthouse, just kind of dump them off with Lula, and she would entertain them in the parlor. And this would give Peter some much needed time to relax, which he really liked to do down in the basement. See, that was the only room in the house where Lula allowed him to smoke one of his cherry tobacco cigars. And that, that smell, by the way, that cherry tobacco, it is still common around the property here. Uh, it's a very distinct smell. I like to think that it's just Peter taking some time off nearby. Now, with that being said, his really favorite place to hang out somebody. is still, Look, all these there. years later, mm -hmm. down in the basement. When you go down there later, you will notice two chairs. I invite you all to sit in these chairs, because when you do, Peter will be more likely to have some sort of an interaction with you. Now, I, we don't know why this is. We don't know why he likes these chairs so much. They weren't his. They're not even antiques. They're just two chairs we got in the 90s, and he seems to like them. Now, I want to warn you, though. See, Peter treats people differently depending on whether he thinks they're a man or a woman. And I say how he thinks because he's an old-timey man and he has old-timey sensibilities. For example, my hair is kind of long, so he might think I'm a woman because of that. Now, likewise, doesn't matter who you are, if you've got short hair, he's probably just going to think you're a man because he's judgy that way. <laughs> now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because with people that he thinks are men, he's been known to be aggressive. He pokes, he prods. I've had people go downstairs wearing a baseball cap and it's been flipped right off the top of their head. See, that was very rude back in the day, wearing a hat indoors. And Peter, I guess, still thinks it's 1900. Now, I've had multiple people go downstairs and they've said they felt a cold <coughs> hand grab the back of their head. Bless you. Thank you. Now, one of the stranger things that's happened uh, came when a former tour guide, keyword former, uh, tried to challenge Peter. See, he sat down in one of the chairs, and he thought he was a tough guy. So he said, Peter, if you don't show me you're here, I'm going to take these chairs, I'm going to put them in the back of my pickup truck, and I'm going to let them smash on the highway. Now, Peter didn't like that one bit. And that tour guide said he felt two heavy hands push him out of the chair and onto the floor. Like I said, he no longer works here. Now, that's not the first time that's happened. It certainly won't be the last. So, I guess feel free to challenge Peter. Just, you know, be nice, be respectful as best you can. He puts up with a lot. Uh, now, for the folks that he thinks are women, he's been known to be what we'll call affectionate. He's been known to poke, prod, I already said those things. My brain is in a little mix up right now. He's been known to stroke hair, that's what I meant to say. He strokes hair. He's been known to give shoulder massages, which to be honest, I'm waiting on. <laughs> but above all, it seems that Peter is something of a lights man. Because more than anything else, women report feeling just a finger or two running up and down the outside of their leg. So I guess if you're feeling adventurous later, feel free to try the chairs. Now with that, I believe I'm going to move us on to our next spot. Uh, I'm just going to do one thing real quick. Sammy, can you go to two? I saw it. So close. I smell so So now we 
are going out to our next spot. Watch out for this thing. Oh, I forgot my water bottle. Wait right here. It'll be three seconds. No, so he doesn't do it. Oh, I don't know. I'm done. Step everyone. Do I have a step up through the doorway? Yeah. Step up through the doorway. Come on, Bernard. Step everyone. There's a step up through the doorway. Watch your step. Just downstairs. 
Now there's this like divot, I guess, in the wall that you can fully submerge yourself behind. Once again, we ask you guys don't scare each other, but do feel free to check out that corner if you like. Uh, because, like I said, we've had a lot of activity. There's a whole creepy atmosphere around it. And we're not super creative here, so we call it Creepy Corner. <laughs> now, uh, Creepy Corner, it's had a few major incidents go down there. Um, we used to leave tours downstairs into the basement, and every now and then, for some reason, always a child would shush the corner as if there was something very loud going on that only that child could hear. Now, there were also these mysterious boot prints that once appeared in the concrete. And I don't mean like boot prints of dirt, I mean they were pressed into the concrete, which is a big deal, of course, because the concrete is original. See, this house was made in 1876, and that concrete has not been touched since 1876. So one day we all come in, and it looks like it's someone stepped in wet cement. And of course, that's going to raise some red flags, right? But before we could even address that, and our maintenance guys could fix it, they come in one day, and it's just as strange as they appear, they were gone. So, like I said, weird stuff happens down there, but the strangest by far is the figure that people see. It's always described the same way, a tall man with a blue suit and a flat blue cap. Now this happens to match the description of our keeper's uniform. Now, I've been bringing them up more lately because we've had a few more sightings. Uh, in fact, not too long ago on one of these tours, uh, there were a couple of young men, about eight or nine years old, standing to my left on the other side of this railing. And they pulled me aside later when I was moving us to the next spot, and they said, Jackson, when you were talking about the man that stands in the corner, we looked downstairs, and there was a man standing in the corner. So I'm going to request of all of you guys, if you see something going on behind me, wait till I'm gone to let me know. I don't want to know about it. Uh, in fact, uh, just on Friday night, I, uh, uh, someone listened to my advice, very thankfully, and uh, as I'm moving us to our next spot, this very frantic little girl pulls me aside and says she was looking downstairs while I was talking, and there was a bright red face looking back at her from the basement. So, like I said, don't tell me. Tell me after the tour. So, uh, now with that, there's a few other spots in the house that I recommend you guys check out. Um, the most notable is probably across the hall, the other half of this floor. It's made to look like a Victorian era house, like it might have looked when it was made. And there's a lot of antique stuff in there. Um, and the strangest is an antique rocking chair. See, there was an incident where, on a private tour of one guest, she thought if she sat down in the rocking chair, she could make contact with the first light keeper to live in the house. His name was Major William Harn, and she got special permission. Now, before any of you guys ask, no, you are not allowed to sit in the rocking chair. But she sits down, she says, well, she says something that makes a mistake. Instead of Major William Harn, she says, Captain Harn, are you here? And Major Harn had worked very hard for his title, and he didn't like when people forgot it. So, this rocking chair she's sitting in, it starts moving back and forth and shaking back and forth until she's practically thrown from it. And the tour guy that's with her, she thinks that this is some sort of a goof. She thinks that it's a prank, she's being messed with. But, you know, she wants to keep it light, she doesn't want any awkwardness going on. So she plays along and looks at the chair, still moving back and forth. And she thinks, you know, it's going to slow down because she just stood up from the chair. So, playing along, she says, well, Major Harn, if you're still here, stop the chair. Now, like I said, she thought it was going to slow down as if someone had just stood up from it, right? Well, as soon as she says, stop the chair, it stops. Then it's tracks. 
And with that, they decided to leave the house. Now, I have had a few experiences in this house myself. Um, definitely the weirdest one, it kept happening a lot uh, for some reason, I don't know why. When I was uh, closing the house on multiple occasions throughout the week, I have to close this house at the end of our daytime hours. I'll lock all the doors, I'll go through the whole place and make sure there's no one in here. And when I first started for a few months, about half the time I did this, I would always hear whistling coming from the same room, on the other side to the right. Now, I don't know who that might be. Uh, there have been other various musical reports uh, throughout our history here. Lots of people will hear singing, humming, that kind of thing. So I think it might be those same spirits messing with me. Now, with that, I'm going to move us on to our next spot. Is everyone okay going to the very next floor? Yes. 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 All right. So we're going oh. just up. Right up the floor. Oh, yes. Thank you. And you're over here again. 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 So just uh, okay. let me know uh, first to show you all where you're going. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Letter, please. Pardon. Pardon. All right, everyone, hold the door to the folks behind you. Go ahead. This camera will not focus. Well, I don't know what's going on. Huh? I don't know what's going on with it. It's weird. Make their own personal playground, and the 
this was, of course, an active construction site. Now, any parents in the room, you might have just had sirens going off in your head thinking about kids playing on a construction site, which is never a good idea. So Mr. Pitty sat down with his kids. He told them, go anywhere on the island, play wherever you want, do not play on the construction site. Now, of course, what happens when you tell a group of children not to do something? They do. That is right. They, of course, go to play on the White House whenever they can get away with it. But they have a favorite toy. See, there is an iron rail car. It was made to move bricks down from the docks where all the building materials would come in, all the way up to the lighthouse, and to the girls. It kind of looks like their own personal roller coaster. So they would hop on in at the top when they saw it wasn't being used. They'd push off and go sailing down the track. Right when they got to the bottom, they'd hop out and push it right back up and go again. Now, as they got to the bottom, they'd do a break on first. Now, they did this a lot up until 1873, July. They see that the car is not in use. On this day, they bring a friend with them. We don't know much about the friend. We know she was an African-American girl. We believe she was the child of a construction worker or maybe a maid who lived on the grounds. Sadly, there were no other records of her pet. So the four girls hop in the cart. They push off and go sailing down the track. And right when they get towards the dock, where they normally throw the brake on, they figure out that the brake was broken. And that is why the car was not in use that day. So they go down the track, they go off the dock, and that iron rail cart they're in flips over and it pins them underwater. Mm -hmm. So there's a man nearby named Dan Sessions, who is a construction worker, and he sees the whole thing happen. He jumps in the water, he swims as fast as he can, he uses all of his strength, all of his might to try and lift up that iron rail cart and save the girls. But it's just not enough and he takes just a little too long. He can only save Carrie, who was the youngest. So July of 1873, four girls go into the water and only one comes out. Now that is easily the most tragic story I have told you expect that that energy would follow to how we feel these spirits here today. But the opposite is true. The girls here are very playful. Uh, they like to play pranks, for example. Now, you may have noticed I've been moving around a little bit here. This isn't just so I can talk to all of you. Uh, but it's also because their favorite targets are people who are sitting there standing still with their feet close together. So you can move. Untie shoelaces and then tie the two shoes together. So that if you're not paying attention, if you stand up, you take a step, you fall flat on your face. We even had someone once who was standing inside the lighthouse, the very bottom, one foot on that bottom step. And she was being calm, quiet, listening to her tour guide that she was really excited to climb. And she decides to look down at her shoes, and they have been tied to the railing of the staircase. And she suddenly decides that she no longer wants to climb, and she leaves the property immediately. <laughs> now, uh, one of the other things that they like to play with are these slow sticks. So, I ask you guys, don't spin these around, don't throw them right? They can make a mess, they're distraction, we just don't like it. And we've had this rule for a while. So when we had a private tour of Girl Scouts a few years ago, we told them this rule. So what I'm saying is we told a group of 20 or so small children not to do something. <laughs> and of course, all night, this is all the tour guide is seeing. It's just blow stitch being played with nonstop. And she's just trying to power through. She just wants to get through the day and go home. So she's giving her tour, she's not paying any mind. And so they get up to this room here, and then finally she sees a glow stick pop off and go to the lines at the end of the room. She just kind of sighs to herself, 
picks it up, gets it back, keeps giving her a tour, and just a couple minutes later, the same glow stick pops off, flies to the end of the room. And at this point, she has had enough. So she picks it up, she gives it back, and she's about to lay down the law on this poor girl whose arms shoot up in fear. She says, I have not touched my glow stick all night. And of course, no one believes her. So she says, I'll prove it. She puts it back around her neck. She stands in the middle of the room, arms out to her side, and everyone sits in a circle around her. And they all watch for about 10 minutes. For a while, nothing happens. And right when they're about ready to give up and go home, they see as it lifts up on its own, pops off and flies to the end of the room. That everyone stands up and flies out of the room. <laughs> so keep your eye on your glow sticks. They like to just behave. Um, and see. Oh, yeah, because I mentioned it earlier. You know how I mentioned the singing and humming that people hear all over the grounds? Well, we got one guess of who that might be. We of course believe that that is the girls. So I think that might be who was whistling at me when I started. Um, they like to mess with people. Uh, they don't really like the tour guides, so I think that might be where that whistling is coming from. Uh, so that's Mary, Eliza, and the third we've taken to calling Ellie. Uh, if you interact with them on your meters, uh, I recommend asking them if they want to play a game. Mm -hmm. Their favorite is hide and seek. Oh, yeah. They like to hide down in a creepy corner. They like the big oak tree at the far end of the site. I've got a lot of activity down there. And uh, also, of course, in the nature trails. So, those are our girls. That I'm here ready to let you guys go. But before I do, just a couple of reminders. If you want to climb tonight, do so by 9.05. The tour ends at 9.30. And finally, pop quiz. How do you leave? Through the gift shop. Did I tell you how to leave? No. no. Uh, into the garage. I completely forgot. This is on me. You need to get a blue glow stick. One of us to let you out. Otherwise, you're locked in. Uh, so, whether you want to or not, you have to talk to at least one of us to get out this evening. If you try and go through the uh, 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 gift shop, well, the doors are locked, they're alarmed, you might accidentally call the police, and we don't want that. So, just come get one of us. Uh, and with that, um, I'm going to let you all loose. Just let me get to the lighthouse before you do, all right? Right, have a great night, everyone. Uh, have fun. Be safe. Be respectful. Thank you. So now what? Down. This way. Hold on now. This is not easy for me. Alright. Go slow. Down. So where are we going? Down, down? I don't know where you stand. You found it. You're doing it. It's a boy. One more. Down. Hey, you guys. You want to touch your face Uh, sure. I'm going to do that first. Everyone seems to be going to the White House. What do you want to do?
I'm panting to death. Oh my god. Ooh. I don't know what that says, but hopefully you can see that. Yeah, it's okay. Alright. Okay, so again. Here we go. You're all killing me. Yeah, no idea. 
start walking. Whew. That was a nice long walk. down because my other half wants up here. confession.
Breeze up here, but it's hot. Take your time. Oh, you're ki really? All right, well, we are in the basement of what is this? The house? Yeah. Yeah, this is the house. The Lake Keeper house. Yes. He didn't actually live in the White House. He lived here. Right. You can see. You can see. I'm gonna go in here. Is there any steps through here? No. Straight. I'm gonna go through here. As you can see, Bruno's pulling me. So, wow, look at this. Right. Now, we're allowed to sit in these chairs? These are the two chairs they encourage you to sit in. There's a mannequin back there. Yeah, he said that there was a mannequin back here. Uh-huh. These are the chairs. Let's sit down. That Pete. Oh. Pete. Okay, I just went out of focus. This thing has not been focusing right all night. <clears throat> We're the only ones down here. Spooky. We can't really do any ghost stuff, you know, because there's still a bunch of people outside and they were loud. Oh, they were horrible. Did you hear that kid screaming when you were in the house? Yeah. He was clear outside. I know. Horrible. I mean, people can tell you children. It's supposed to be an adult yeah. tour anyway. Right. Yeah. And then, well. I'm going to try to walk over there because my footing's not that great. Where is the corner where the girls are? Is it in here or is it in the other room? I don't know. We needed the girls to come out and play with Bruno. Maybe someone will come and visit. Maybe somebody will come and visit. Quiet. Anyone here? You want to come and play with Bruno? Bruno is here to play. What's wrong, Bruno? You want to go? It's hopping. Why? Why are you hopping? You want to go? Alright. Come on. Let's go. Alright. He wants to go. Look, there's no way in these rooms. What is that? Ships. Oh, me. Oh, look. Huh? Or light. One is out. <laughs> no, he don't like it now. He never not like it now. Yeah. 
I guess so. All right, guys. We're gonna get me here. Uh, it's been fun. Who wants out? He didn't like it in there. No, he didn't. Did he? Uh uh. No, I got it. Yeah. Go. Oh, well, I need to go behind you so you can see. Oh, it's raining. Yep. Okay. I'm going to try the trail. It's over there. Bruno. He don't, he don't want, he don't want near that place. No, he don't. He's had enough. What's wrong, Bruno? Hmm? You don't like it in there? No? Hmm? He don't want, what, are they going to the trail? I don't know. I don't think so. He don't want to try to take him to the house. Come on, Bruno. Want to go in? Do you want to go in? He usually wants to go up the steps and go in. He's like, not wanting. No? no. Right. Okay, we're gonna to go. go. We're gonna go. Had enough? Yeah, he wants out of here. You don't like it. Did you see something? Huh? Yeah, he, he's never not wanted to go explore a room. Mm -mm. Yeah, to fight him the whole way down there. Yeah. Huh. Hey. Okay. I guess we're leaving. Yeah. You'll have to turn off this. Hey everyone, it's the next day and we're getting ready to pack up and we're going to leave. We're Shaver's making coffee and some breakfast for us. And then we're going to head on home. It is supposed to rain on and off all day, so we'll just go home, I guess. And uh, so that ends the, the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was fun. But really, there wasn't enough time to explore. You know, you got to go up the, the lighthouse and come back down. It takes time to do that. And by the time you finish that, you might get to one more exhibit, unless you're in your 20s and it doesn't take you forever to get up the steps. But um, it took me a while. But I got up there and came back down, so I did it. I'll tell you what, my legs were burning. <laughs> so, anyways... That's it for now. Monkey says she's out. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye, y'all.